This is 7 National News and in our top story, in his capacity as ruler of Dubai, Vice President and Prime Minister of the UAE, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum has issued Law No. 15 of 2015, partially amending Law No. 17 of 2005 on the establishment of Dubai's Road and Transport Authority. The new law substitutes the title of Chief Executive Officer with Director General and Chairman of the Board of Directors and further substitutes the term Board with the term Board of Directors wherever they may appear in the law. The new law aims to create unity and synchronization between the law on the establishment of Dubai's Road and Transport Authority and our other relevant legislation applied in Dubai in addition to enhancing the administrative work in the RTA and its subsidiaries. The Health Authority Abu Dhabi has announced two new cases of coronavirus, which are reported as stable and receiving the necessary medical care. According to a report published by Emirates News Agency WAM, the authority said that the two cases show no symptoms explaining that the cases were confirmed through an active investigation and those infected with the virus have been isolated in hospitals as a precautionary measure. The authority is also actively checking the health status of the contacts of the two cases. Based on previous similar cases, HAD expects that the two patients will recover from the virus automatically over the 10 or 14 days. The health authority added that in coordination with the Ministry of Health, health authorities and competent department have taken all necessary precautionary measures as per as the international standards and recommendations from the World Health Organization. The Dubai Electricity and Water Authority and the Human Development Authority, KHDA, today celebrated the winners of the 10th Conservation Award 2014-2015. Under the theme for a better tomorrow, the award is part of DIWA's commitment to promote a culture of conservation and environmental awareness and to encourage individuals and institutions to adopt best practices in conserving the environment. The ceremony was attended by His Excellency Saeed Mohammed Tayyar, the Managing Director and CEO of DIWA, His Excellency Dr. Abdullah Al Karam, the Chairman of the Board of Directors and Director General of the Knowledge and Human Development Authority in Dubai, as well as other senior officials from the government departments and the private sector. The Conservation Awards honors educational institutions for their efforts to reduce electricity and water consumption. The winners included 18 institutions covering nurseries, kindergartens, primary and secondary schools, universities, colleges, special needs centers, and adult education centers. According to officials, the Conservation Award contributed to significant savings this year, with a reduction of nearly 5,500 tons of carbon dioxide emissions and financial savings of 10 million dirhams. The first objective is, I think, to change the mindset. Uh, and I think for the last 10 years, we have a, a great achievement. Uh, it's about uh, 60,000 ton of footprint uh, saving in CO2, a reduction in CO2, and also uh, about 125 gigawatt hour. And uh, this uh, uh, also in water, it's about 1 billion gallon of water is saving. So it's a great achievement. This is within the school, I think. We're very proud. We won the third prize. Uh, in the conservation awards uh, so we are star international school altuar a competition like this you know it gives you an incentive to to want to do more when you feel that you can make a difference really it's not the award but it's the fact that it made us realize yes we can we can we just haven't tried before i was monitoring our class to put the ac in uh, in 11 24 degrees and i've, I've made sure that all the, at break times the ac and the lights were turned off and uh, many things we've done in the school and we're trying to even save water for next year. And Programmable radar ca traffic cameras will go live on the streets of Abu Dhabi by the end of the year, according to a police roads expert. Dr. Atif Gharib, a roads and traffic advisor at Abu Dhabi Police, was quoted in local reports as saying that all radar cameras will be adaptable 
and will control enforcement from the department's Smart Traffic Center, which is waiting for the variable messages that notifies drivers of speed limit changes according to, to conditions to be ready. The information was outlined during the Smart Traffic Middle East Conference, which featured case studies of management systems around the world. Between 2009 and 2014, road fatalities in the Emirate decreased by 40%, while pedestrian fatalities dropped by 35%. At the same time, the number of vehicles on Abu Dhabi's roads rose from 601,208 in 2009 to 947,508 in 2014. Abu Dhabi's vision is to reach zero traffic fatalities by 2030. And finally, in the bulletin, Sharjah Museum's Department and Museum with No Frontiers, in collaboration with the League of Arab States, have launched the exclusive Arab version of the international online project Sharing History to explore the historic Arab, Turkish and European relations while promoting intercultural dialogue among nations. At a detailed press conference held at Sharjah Maritime Museum, the Director General of Sharjah Museum Department, Manal Ataya, said that the aim of the virtual museum is to promote intercultural dialogue between different cultural legacies and encourage harmony through art and history. She said that through a brainstorming workshop being held until the 21st of May, the department aims to develop ideas for Sharjah's first cultural tourism trail based on Sharjah museums, describing Sharjah as an ideal location for the launch of this online project. The chairperson and CEO of Museum with No Frontiers, Eva Schubert, said that Sharjah is truly the cultural capital of the Arab world. And with so many museums in the city, it is also the museum capital of the region. Dignitaries attending the event said that visitors to the Sharing History portal will be able to inspect a huge variety of objects, images and documents contributed by partners from 22 countries, including items from Sharjah's top cultural sites. Adding that the web portal has many interactive features, the officials said that this will allow visitors to create their own personalized collections or curate their own exhibitions Prior to the launch of the Arab version of Sharing History, the project was already launched in Ankara, with a European launch happening in Vienna next month. Especially nowadays, of course, it is absolutely important to know more about each other and to respect each other's different viewpoints, which do not necessarily have to present a challenge, but can actually open new horizons and offer up new opportunities. So this project in particular works exactly on this basis and given that Sharjah is such a committed place when it comes to intercultural dialogue and we at Sharjah Museums Department in particular always look at developing our projects with an eye on promoting intercultural dialogue and tolerance. We really felt this was a project with which we were happily associated. We are speaking about a big exhibition um, explaining the relations between the Arab world, the Ottoman Empire and Europe in, in a period that is crucial to understand what's going on in the present. We speak about the period between 1815, which is the end of Napoleon's uh, enterprises around Europe and the Mediterranean, and, eight, and 1918, which is the end of World War I. Uh, we can say that what happens today in the region has its roots in that period. So uh, 22 countries, nine Arab countries, uh, Turkey and the other European countries came together and selected uh, artifacts, monuments and sites that are related to that period and to that show the interaction between these two civilizations. So uh, during uh, an almost three years work process, we have set up altogether 10 exhibitions focusing on different topics such as, for example, migrations, such as the rediscovering of the past, uh, technical innovation, economic development, because the 19th century is the beginning of a lot of um, developments that later set the scene for, for our today's uh, identities.